everybody. Welcome to episode 16 of Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I am Cat Wonders, and like I said, this is episode 16. This is my podcast, Sweet 16, and we're going to celebrate. How? By mixing a concocktail, as usual. <laughs> I've had a bit of a weekend. Definitely did not spend it at home, and I'm still recovering. I still need to go buy groceries and I'm just going to use what I had <laughs> laying around the house. So sometimes that's just what we have to do. I am wearing this really cute top by Fortunate One, but it's kind of being a little funky with me. So if I'm playing around and making sure my titties are in, then that's what's going on because I don't trust it. It's actually not bad, but uh, it's just something's going on here. So just stay tuned. Uh, I've got my handy dandy little light stand right here. As usual, I've got my little accessories ready. Also, I got my nails done in this beautiful nude. This is kind of like what Victoria's Secret models get their nails done like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a better way to say that. This is how they do their nails and photo shoots and stuff. It's not distracting and kind of elongating. Does it work? <laughs> okay, anyway, um, again, <laughs> apologies for a uh, phlegmy sounding voice. I am battling smoke like crazy. Wake up every day in hopes for a clear blue sky. It's there. It's just beyond this veil, this hail, this veil of smoke. But I'm still in good spirits. Get it? Spirits? <laughs> Okay, so I have my ice and you know what? How much do you love this glass? This is retro as hell. And I've got this in like a amber glass, a blue glass and a clear glass. So just, just thought I'd share that with you. Today, I'm gonna be using my mushroom glass. Why not? And I've got some of this rose diet. I put Gatorade in this too. So it's not just this. So this is kind of a concoction of its own. Sourpuss. Okay, I haven't had this since I was in high school, like 18. 18 is the legal drinking age in Alberta. So when we were 18, we were getting crazy, but I may have been a little younger. I don't promote underage drinking whatsoever, but just being honest, and it, I probably just had a little taste, but the cherry version of this, I think cherry or whatever the red one is, was always my favorite. But you know what? I need some green in my life, some green puss. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna use some of this. And I believe this is apple flavored. Yeah, apple. I thought maybe it could have been lime. And then I've got my apple absolute juice. So this is actually so delicious. If you're ever looking to grab something just to drink for the day, say you're going out on the boat, actually don't drink on boats, that's not legal. But the beach, you know, where can you <laughs> drink publicly? You can't, not in Canada anyway. You know what I mean? If you're just gonna stick to one thing, this will probably give you a frick of a headache though. But this is, it smells exactly like fresh squeezed apple juice. I know this because every time I go to Germany, generally in the fall is when they have their like apple festivals and Apfelsaft, which is sparkling apple juice, is the best. And this smells exactly like it. Oh, so good. So anyway, apple, apple, get it? This is a bit of orange Gatorade, which is orange flavored. What is orange Gatorade supposed to even be? So quickly, just a quick note. I have not worn a stitch of makeup for six days and I'm loving it. Today is the first day in almost a week that I put makeup on my face. And when I do put makeup on my face, I kind of want to take advantage of it and go for dinner or something. So <laughs> I think tonight I might want to go out for dinner. There's a few places where I live that are incredibly awesome. It is high season, which means there are people everywhere. It's summertime, people are going crazy. The highways are closing like friggin' two times a day. <laughs> what was my point? I don't know. Let's get back to concoctails, shall we? So um, I've got my mushroom glass. These I ordered on a random website. I can't remember the name of it, but if you just type in like mushroom glass, I'm sure they're probably on Etsy and that's not where I got it from. But Okay, so we're just gonna mix something up. Can you see this? Put right there. Some ice cubes. Oh, fell in. Now I had to get, oh. no, this is a problem. <laughs> with this glass. I have to use the skinny ones because I want to get them down in there. One. I don't think any other ones will go. I'll screw it. Oh! Yes! Are you guys even seeing what I'm doing here? It doesn't matter because I'm just putting ice cubes in a glass and for some reason it's super challenging. 
Remember that game when you were a kid at the arcade where you would put a coin in and it would like stand on it? No, maybe that was more of like a donation thing. It was very smart actually because it got like all the kids to put money in the thing because they wanted to see the coin roll around this sort of funnel and then drop in. Like what? That is such a clever idea to get people to donate money because their kids want, like they want to see it happen, you know? So enough of this unsanitary debauchery. I don't want to dump it because there's so much water in here. My hands are clean, semi-clean. I mean, I washed them, I don't know, half an hour ago. <laughs> Touched five things on the way up to my studio. Anyway, okay, so we got our ice. Now, I want to kind of do like a layered look. You know me, I'm all about aesthetics when it comes to my cocktails. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do, because I do want the flavor of this, the color is useless to me. And I want green on the bottom. Oh, this smell's going to take me back. Definitely a candy apple scent. Like if you were to get a candy in an apple flavor, that's what it smells like. This smells like real apple juice. This doesn't, it doesn't take me back at all. I don't think I ever drank. Let me just try some. Woo, that is like pure sugar. It's not really as green as I was hoping. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little watered down. I may break a record and make two cocktails throughout this podcast. Now, why is there Gatorade in this juice? Because um, there was only this much of the juice left and I kind of wanted to go orange and green. So I thought, well, I'll just chuck this in there. How pretty. It's kind of like from my angle, I don't know if, if you can see this, but there's like a glowing light, what looks like in the very center of the mushroom. Can you see this? Oh. So pretty. Now let's accessorize. <laughs> now, okay, so green and orange. It's kind of a very mild light green color. So check these out. I know we show you guys these all the time, but these are little cocktail accessories, little stir sticks, whatever you want to call them. And I ordered them on Amazon and they came so quickly. And I think that they're a really good way to, because I'm obsessed with drink markers. I've got different types where, you know, you have 15 people over. Everybody has a little accessory on their glass so they can recognize whose is whose. These are also another good way to do it if you've got more cocktaily drinks not necessarily wine just to kind of keep track of your drink and who doesn't want like a really cute little fantasy miniature something in their cocktail <laughs> i do sorry i've got my hair up and i kind of want like my hair is so long right now i do have to get it cut but i kind of want it to be like showing but it's always behind me like this rude this is orange and green but i kind of like to contrast Ooh, i love the martini and look at the little olive in it isn't that funny? I created a pathway to the bottom and now it's mixing. So let's stick with that. Let's add a palm tree. These are so, these are my favorite, my absolute favorite. These are like little drink umbrellas, but they're palm trees. And I have to fluff it up a little before I wanna, I don't wanna rip it. <gasps> I love it so much. And I brought a straw this time. All right, cute, have a look. Okay, now we have to name it. The last name that I came up with was really uninventive and ridiculous. This will probably be very <laughs> similar. <laughs> this guy is shaped like a mushroom. It is orange and green. And I think it's quite pretty. Let's name this a dirty sunset. Yes, because it's kind of like, <laughs> if it was, pink and orange it'd be more of a more of a sunset look but because it's sort of like swampy and it's a mushroom it's a dirty sunset moment of truth let me taste this bad boy i'm gonna i'm gonna blow it <laughs> i'm gonna blow into it to mix it <laughs> it works here we go dirty sunset this is the best cocktail i've ever made and you'll never be able to recreate it because <laughs> no actually you can let me make sure to put the recipe, Dirty Sunset. And some of my other podcasts, I haven't been putting the recipe down because I'm just really fooling around and not being super serious about it. If you're really mad about it, you can also DM me on Instagram. That's also a good way to get a hold of me. <laughs> I do check them often, delete about 50 at a time. But if there is a question there, I'll usually try to answer it. And if you're not following me on Instagram, go to cat.wonders. That's my, that's my Instagram at cat.wonders. Okay, so this dirty sunset is the bomb. If I made this for anybody, they'd be like, what is that? I love it and I will make it again. And like I said, you just need Gatorade and like mix it with some of this and you're good to go. Okay, I'm going to fix the camera and I'll be right back. Check my face. 
face because it's a disgrace. My greasy face. So I'm wearing a new foundation primer. If you don't know what that is, that is something you put underneath your foundation. It's supposed to help make it stick better and last longer, but it's got like a glow to it. So it's supposed to like be a glow from within. And I don't know what I was thinking because I have enough issues trying to keep my face greaseless as possible that why would I add like an illuminizer under my foundation? I don't know. I just did it. And then when it was on, I was like, oh shit, this is like, I look kind of like a glow worm. <laughs> Do you know what though? Remember those when you were a kid? Did who did not have a glow worm? I feel like, you know, like the glow worms, the little wormy guy that lit up. It was very like soft glow. It was kind of like your little buddy at nighttime. It's your light to go. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Or if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll be more shocked if you don't. Okay, so <laughs> this is me trying to rip my paper out of my notebook. This is my script for today. It's not really a script. It's just kind of like my ideas, topics, that kind of thing. Okay, so we got the cocktails over with. Dirty Sunset. My week was wonderful. It was actually pretty uneventful except for a couple of the days. One of the days I went jet boating and that is freaking fun. So I don't know if you know what a jet boat is, but essentially you can take these things in this much water. <laughs> well, like this much water because the motor is not like hanging down below the boat. It's flush with the bottom of the boat and these things rip. But anyway, uh, we were going up river, which is something that is incredible. I've done a ton of whitewater rafting down river and seen beautiful scenery and whatever. But when you're going up river, it's a totally different experience. Now we, it, we made a day out of it. It was really, really a great day. It's awesome. On the way out there, I was like, oh gosh, I forgot to bring drinks. Like I normally would bring, you know, a couple of little vodka sodas or something just towards the end of the day. I totally forgot them. And I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Not a big deal. I had lots to drink and water and Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> we were ripping and it was a freaking hot, but because of all the smoke, it's really strange. It's kind of like, it doesn't look as bright as it should with the sun out, but it's hot. It almost feels hotter. It's almost like the smoke molecules or whatever you want to call them in the air, keep the heat in. And so it feels super hot. It kind of feels muggy. And then I'm like, do I need to put sunscreen on? How does this work? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's so much blockage from the sun that, you know, does it make sense? I don't know. So it was hot. And then of course, you know, come five, six o'clock, you want to just like crack a cold one. I don't have any, but we were kind of like just, you know, working our way back. And suddenly one of the people on the boat was like, what's that over there? And it was kind of something that got stuck in like a log jam, but it was sort of bright pink. So we work our way over there and literally it's a bag that somebody else lost full of booze. <laughs> Uh, it was actually like four of these strange kind of hemp beers. So, and then one of them was this Lone Tree Cider, but it was the ginger cider. It's so funny because like, this is one of my favorite drinks. <laughs> there was just one in there and I'm like, the universe literally gifted this to me. I know I could get into so many different scenarios where I've forgotten something and the universe is like, boop. There it is. There's one other specific time. I'll just shortly tell you the story. I was way out in the bush. I was actually doing firewood because in my old house, it was wood burning stove. So I had to chop firewood, stack firewood. I was out in the bush getting firewood and I forgot my gloves. Now, if you've ever done firewood and you have a manicure, that sucks. And so I thought, well, whatever, I'll just deal with it, kind of do what I can. And, and I think I had like one, you know, those like cheap dollar store gloves that, you know, like they're fabric, you just throw them on. I had one of those in my car. <laughs> so I, uh, heading out there and getting farther and farther on the bush. What do you know? And this is, I'm talking in the middle of nowhere is a pair of ladies gloves sitting on the side of the road, just sitting there for me. The universe <laughs> made somebody forget their gloves there because I knew that I'd be rolling around eventually and needing them. I almost cried. It was so ridiculous. Cause it was, I was really worried about it. And I was thinking, you know, last thing I want is like to scrape up my hands and get them all scuffed up. Cause you know, when you have a hand injury or you got like a cut on your hand, it takes forever to go away. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So, uh, yeah, that was one other time. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the universe is trying to encourage me to drink booze. Okay. But I think maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it would be a funner time for everybody, but I just thought it was really funny. And uh, I have a dozen more stories like that that I could tell you about the universe dropping little thing. And I say the universe, but God, you know, the, the almighty one, <laughs> whatever. It's just really 
enlightening and I recognize it often. So thank you universe. And if you know what I'm talking about and you have the same kind of thing happen to you, let me know because like I said, it's a real thing. And just thought that I would share that with you. Okay, so when I went to Korea, I was in South Korea for three weeks and had the best time of my life and also discovered a lot of new beauty things. There's things that I use today that I would have never used today if it weren't for me discovering them in South Korea, like life-changing products. One of them down there was solid perfume. Now, this is not a new thing, but I brought back a really cute little kitty solid perfume. And it almost is in like a big chapstick type vessel. And you just roll it up and you just dab it on wherever you want to wear it. The smell, of course, to me is South Korea. Like when I smell it, it brings me back there. I wore it every day that I was down there, kind of intentionally because I know how smells can really trigger memory. So I wanted that memory to be attributed to this certain smell. So recently I was shopping in the city and I found these. So these are Odyssey or Odess. <laughs> O-D-D-E-S, wait, O-D-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, for those of you listening and not watching. This is, excuse me, it's a solid perfume. Oops. And it is so crazy how incredible this stuff smells. This is not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> you just kind of put it on your finger. It feels a bit like a chapstick, but it's a bit drier feeling. And I just literally put it there and then a little bit on my wrist little bits of it oh my god this one is perfume solid duh so this is like you can buy one of these and then put whatever perfume solid perfume you want into it then i thought you know how like when you're gonna be intimate with somebody and you want to smell your best i just feel like it's a lot less pungent and a lot less um in your face than regular perfume it's just a mild scent it's almost like when you wash your hair with a good smelling shampoo the smell is there but it's not like in your face maybe some but it's nice to have a really mild perfume you know something that's not like i don't know see i used to love and i still do love it i just haven't worn it for a long time but satsuma from the body shop it's like an orange smell very distinct Distinct. And when somebody's wearing it, I know right away. But the lotion did the same kind of thing. Just this very kind of mild scent where you can smell it on somebody, but it's not like overpowering. Because I have some perfumes that I love and that I wear all the time. But if I'm going to be in a car or in a train or on a plane or whatever, you don't want to britzing yourself with perfume. It's one of the worst things you can do because I've been a victim of nasal assault. <laughs> What's that? What? I'm not nasal. You know where you're forced to sit next to somebody who's like laid it on. I'm talking not good. Guys too. Guys are also guilty of like, I don't know, aftershave, cologne, fucking hair gel, part of my language. <laughs> you know where you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ. No, don't do that to people. It's like, why would you? You know, you look like you smell good. You don't have to smell like you're covering something up. It's almost worse because it does smell like you're trying to cover something else up. Just smell like you got up and had a shower that day. Don't make it's, you know, like you've crashed, landed in the bay in the perfume section. <laughs> Some people do. <laughs> like a helicopter crash in the, yeah, anyway. Let me have a little more of this. Okay, so I was listening to the Bad Friends podcast this morning. So I film for my podcast usually on Mondays or Tuesdays and Bad Friends post their podcasts in the morning on Mondays. So I always listen as I'm getting ready. Highly recommend. They're freaking hilarious. Those guys, this last one was really funny actually. And uh, anyway, so... <laughs> They talked about walking in on somebody in the bathroom or being walked in on when you're in like a public washroom, restroom. And, <laughs> and it's really funny because like, what do you say when somebody opens the stall door and you're sitting there? And I know that this has probably happened to every one of you listening. At one point in your life, you've walked in on somebody in the bathroom or you've been walked in on in the bathroom. Both has happened to me. And... <laughs> I think the joke or not the joke but what they were the story that was a Santino anyway and he said he opened the door because they were all waiting in line or something and they were all locked but then one seemed to be kind of ajar but it still was locked so he pushed the door open and then he said the guy that was in there just grabbed his crotch and was like I'm in here <laughs> You know, and I'm like, and they were laughing at the fact that he said he's in there. It's so funny because like, what else do you say, right? You know, the person didn't know you were in there. So you don't want to give him shit, literally. <laughs> no, but it's happened to me before. And what I say, what I've said is like, um, what did I say? It was something similar. Like, oh, it's not, it's like, oh, I'm in. I think I probably said the same thing. Like, oh, I'm in here or something like that. You know, like not because I don't think to say, oh, this washroom's occupied or something. You know what I mean? Right. It's just like an instant reaction. Like it's Basically, I'm in here. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's never been like a full on door swing open and me sitting on the toilet like never it's always been like a stall where you can like reach the door and like stop it from being open and then I've also opened the door on people and the one that sticks out in my mind the most was I think I was in like a hospital and the bathroom was pretty big and I just literally like walked in and pushed the door open and it was a lady and she wasn't an old lady but it was a lady just sitting there on the toilet like she didn't say a word and I was like oh my god I'm sorry and I like closed the door and I was like oh god I hate that like because right away you feel kind of like a pervert <laughs> you know you're like and you victimize somebody like unintentionally you know and then suddenly it's like oh my god you know it's just a really uncomfortable thing for both people right because i don't think like you know you'd ever open up the stall and see somebody in there and be like would you hurry up <laughs> Or just point and laugh like, ha ha. But that's how the person feels that's been walked in on. And they're kind of like, oh my God, I don't know. It's sort of a funny topic and it's something that we can all relate to. It made me laugh. So I thought that I would share my bathroom walk-in stories. I, there's more, but I mean, it's not really worth getting into. Now it's time for a segment that I like to call Cat Bag. So cat facts is just facts that I found on the internet. Don't hold them to me. I didn't make them up. I'm reading them to you from different websites, whether they're true or not. You can do your own research, but fact. Bees can fly higher than Mount Everest. Bees can fly higher than 29,525 feet above sea level, according to National Geographic. That's higher than Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. So something I never thought about was how high can bees fly or where can you find them? Like that's high. That's like airplane height. Isn't like cruising altitude like 30,000 feet? Anyway, it's probably different for everywhere. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just so you know. <clears throat> Come on, smoke. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to cough and like a puff of smoke is going to come out. <laughs> Cartoon. <laughs> Alex, you need to edit that in there. <laughs> but could you imagine being on an airplane? Just like some bees, just like they're not cruising at that speed. So yeah, you wouldn't see them up there. But I think, I wonder how many hit the windshield of the plane. Like, oh, just bugs flying at 30,000 feet. What about oxygen? I don't know. Bees are just incredible in so many ways. The Terminator script was sold for $1. James Cameron, we all know him, is the award-winning director of movies like Titanic, Avatar, and The Terminator. And in order to get his big break with The Terminator, he sold the script for $1 and a promise that he'd be able to direct the movie. He basically just wanted to make the movie. So he sold the script for a dollar. Kind of an interesting fact. Terminator is like one of my all-time favorite movies. Arnold Schwarzenegger, my love of my life. <laughs> I had such a crush on him when I was younger and who didn't, right? Okay, fact. An espresso maker was sent into space in 2015. Samantha Cristoforetti is the first female Italian astronaut to get a warm and cozy piece of home sent to her while in orbit. The Italian space agency worked with Italian coffee manufacturer Lavazza to get the coffee capsules flown up and out into space. I mean, there are those of us who cannot live without our coffee. I have an espresso machine. It is the love of my life. I order capsule sleeves. I don't even know where they're coming from, what they are. I really like the pretty colors. <laughs> but usually if I order, like there's 10 pods per sleeve, I'll order like 100 at a time. Because to be honest, I do have two or three a day. And maybe sometimes like a decaf in the evening. But once you go Nespresso, you never go back. And for me, if there's an espresso maker like at a hotel that I'm staying at, I'm very excited all the time. Because I'm like, it's the best. The traditional, by the way, I don't have like the newer, bigger pods. Okay, so I read this and I was like, what? South American river turtles talk in their eggs. And I was like, talk to their eggs. I thought it was some sort of spelling mistake. Turtles don't have vocal cords and their ears are internal. So scientists believed that turtles were deaf and didn't communicate through sounds. However, research has found that turtles actually communicate at an extremely low frequency that sounds like clicks, clucks, and hoots that can only be heard through hydrophone, a microphone used underwater. These sounds even come from the egg before the turtle hatches. So that's what the title means. River turtles talk in their eggs. So they're in their eggs talking. These sounds even come from the egg before the turtle hatches. Researchers have hypothesize that this helps all the turtle siblings hatch at once. So they're actually like communicating to each other. Like, okay guys, let's go. And then they're all like, how does a turtle hatch? Is it just like push? Cause it's buried in sand. So it's like squished in there. Cause their eggs are soft, right? So how the hell does it, like it's like being buried alive. 
How do you get out of a turtle egg shell? Hmm. I don't know. Fact. Penicillin was first called mold juice. That might have been a good title for my mushroom drink. Are mushrooms? They're, no, they're a different family than mold. Or are they? Psilocybin, right? Mold is something different. Alexander Fleming was one of those quirky scientists who accidentally made a scientific breakthrough in a scientific breakthrough. <laughs> In 1928, the bacteriologist left a petri dish in his lab while he was on vacation, only to return and find that some liquid around the mold had killed the bacteria in the dish. This became the world's first antibiotic, but before naming it penicillin, he called it mold juice. 170-year-old bottles of champagne were found at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. So I think this is not new news, obviously. This probably happened a while ago, and I've heard of, like, bottles of wine being found in shipwrecks and stuff. The bottles of bubbly are estimated to have been traveling from Germany to Russia during the 1800s when they sank to the bottom of the sea, says New Scientist. New Scientist is like a... Turns out that the bottom of the sea, where the temperatures are between 2 and 4 degrees Celsius, is a great place for wine aging. Onologists? Onologists? People who study wine and wine making. O-E-N-O-L-O-G-I-S-T-S. -S. Sampled the champagne and described it as sometimes cheesy with animal notes and that it had elements of wet hair. What the frick? Ew. <laughs> Now, I'm wondering, you know, things that get like better with age or wine ages better over time. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean? Like, did the wine taste, did the champagne taste like that when it was fresh? Like, you know what I mean? They just didn't have the skills back then to make really great champagne. So they just made it and just cared about the booze and didn't care about the wet hair element. <laughs> or did it get that way because it was so old, right? I'm curious. What do you think? On the subject of hair, Neil Armstrong's hair was sold in 2004 for $3,000. The lucky buyer, John Rezenkoff, holds the Guinness World Record for the largest collection of hair from historical celebrities, reports NBC. The not-so-lucky barber, Mark Sizemore, who cut Armstrong's hair, received threats of being sued by Armstrong's lawyers, who said he violated an Ohio law that protects the rights of famous people. Sizemore said he wouldn't pay, and Rezenkoff said he wouldn't give back the hair, but that he donate three thousand dollars to charity i guess it was a thing back in the day to like cut off a lock of hair and like give it to somebody it's like a symbol of like love when you give somebody a lock of hair i mean it's creepy as hell nowadays i don't think that would fly but maybe it does i don't know irish bars used to be closed on saint patrick's day think about it <laughs> uh, you might associate saint patrick's day with wearing green and drinking so much you think you actually see leprechauns however until 1961 there were laws in ireland <laughs> ireland that banned bars to be open on March 17th. <clears throat> Since the holiday falls during the period of Lent in the heavily Catholic country, the idea of binge drinking seemed a bit immoral. I don't know when that changed. It's definitely different now. <laughs> And I found through 23andMe that I have quite a bit of Irish blood in me. So I'm going to have to start to celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. Uh, generally, it's funny because like there's not a lot of warning or anything much leading up to St. Patrick's Day. It's like the day of that I find out that it's St. Patrick's Day. And then people are like posting on Instagram like, I'm wearing green today. And I'm like, oh, I guess, it's, yeah, I guess it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> but now I'll be a little, maybe a little bit more conscious. And I don't know, drink green beer. I don't know. <laughs> How many freaking facts did I? Okay, I'm gonna read one more. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Brad Pitt suffered an ironic injury on a film set. During Pitt's prime acting career, he filmed Troy based on Homer's Iliad. He played the brave and buff Greek hero Achilles. Legend has it that Achilles could not be defeated unless hit in his Achilles tenon. Oh, why am I saying Achilles? Achilles. <laughs> Sorry, not Achilles. <laughs> Achilles. He played the brave and buff Greek hero Achilles. Legend has it that Achilles could not be defeated unless hit in the Achilles heel. While filming an epic battle scene, Pitt ironically hurt his Achilles tendon that put him back two months. I mean, that's ironic. That concludes Cat Facts. So I am in a bit of a predicament. Now, this has to do with Christmas, and I know it's July. We're like midway through the year before Christmas comes again. It's six more months and it'll be here, which truly will happen sooner than you think. <laughs> Always sneaks up on me. Now, I have a beautiful fake tree. It's seven and a half feet. My old house did not have high ceilings. This house does. So this past Christmas, I put up a real Christmas tree, like a real tree. The problem, I wanted a taller tree, but I couldn't find one anywhere and nobody would bring one in. And I didn't want to have to drive to the city 
city or something to get a freaking Christmas tree. So I just got a seven and a half footer or like an eight foot tree and decorated it. It was fine. And I grew up with real trees. I love the smell of real trees. The thing is, is I like to keep my tree up until the end of January. <laughs> Not really, but like, you know what I mean? I don't want to have to take it down right away. It's like, oh, it's December 26th. Down comes the tree. I like to extend the holidays and enjoy my beautiful tree and the hard work I put into it. Anyway, so I like to keep it up for a while. And so I had a fake tree in the old house that's seven and a half feet, like I said, pre-lit, beautiful. And they make these little fir tree sticks scented sticks that smell like a tree and really to be honest it really does smell like a real tree i realized that like i didn't need a real tree i just needed like the smell and the ambiance of the tree in my mind it was like one less tree murdered but that's not true because like they cut down as many trees as they want and then they all go and i don't know where they go if they're not used so anyway my predicament is i there's no predicament actually i'm ordering a like a nine and a half foot fake Christmas tree. But I have to do it this month because for whatever reason, I guess it's like Christmas in July or whatever, all Christmas trees are half price right now. Like if you go to Balsam Hill, which is exactly where I want to get my tree from. However, because I live in Canada, I think the shipping is going to be like $500. <laughs> it's be ridiculous. So I have to find the right website, but I would have to do it now, like this month. It seems that this is like the month to buy. So if you are in the market for a fake Christmas tree, make sure you do it this month because you can save like 50%. Pre-lit, like high quality, realistic trees can run $1,500 more even. I want one that's got multicolor lights and it can switch to like just warm white lights or do a little show. <laughs> I want my Christmas tree to be magical. Anyway, I'm gonna go and order one and have two Christmas trees here. I've got one in the basement, which really, it's so beautiful down there. Like you can see it right when you walk in and then the one up top, it's gonna be wonderful. What do you feel though about a fake Christmas tree? Like, is it a deal breaker for you? Like you would never have a fake one or maybe you only grew up with fake trees, but now you want real trees. I don't know. It's kind of like for me, I growing up with real trees, I always thought, oh no, I want real trees. And you know what? Let me tell you a story. One time my mom bought a Christmas tree and what you're supposed to do with them to make them last the longest is kind of like cut off the bottom few inches and then put it right directly into water because it's been sitting God knows where for how long and if you want like the tree to absorb the most amount of water. So she did this one year and made sure to keep the tree watered every day. And I don't think she used any type of like fertilizer or anything, but the tree actually started to grow buds. It started to grow. It grew like new little green. And so like we kept that tree freaking for, I think mom kept it for as long as she could get away with. Cause that was like a miracle. It's like a Christmas <laughs> miracle. The tree started to grow. <laughs> like how is that even possible? Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's that story. But um, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm 50-50 either way, but but the hassle of a real tree, especially when that big is, yeah, I don't know. I could go with fake. Okay, so I had an idea. There's a scene from Dumb and Dumber where Jim Carrey is like, wait a minute. Yeah, I, th I, I think I just had an idea. <laughs> After having my hot pepper experience, like the last hot pepper experience that I had, <laughs> um, you can listen to that in episode 15. But I thought to myself, you know how Navy SEALs and different training for the army, they have all sorts of obstacles that they have to go through. Tough stuff. What if they made them eat like the hottest pepper, so like a Carolina Reaper? What if they made them eat that and then have to do some sort of difficult concentration task? <laughs> you know what I mean? Some sort of challenge. Because really, like if you hear what they do in the Navy, they freaking strap them into helicopter bodies that they have in like a great big Olympic swimming pool. They're strapped in, they flip them underwater, they have to escape and then grab, like unhinge their buddy who's passed out, grab them, pull. Them. And anyway, it's kind of like they risk their lives in training. And I thought that would be an interesting challenge just to almost like make them eat a hot pepper and then to like have to do a puzzle or something and co concentrate in this extreme situation. Because the thing is capsaicin or whatever you want to call it, like hot pepper, it really, it's the same thing they put in pepper spray. You could spray your eyeballs right out and it's not going to hurt you. It actually doesn't do any damage. It just basically just really triggers your senses and friggin' makes you feel like your face is melting off. It's not in any way like harming them. It's just an interesting, I'd like to, s to see it. You know, because I've seen people eat hot peppers, like I mean hot peppers, and they are very composed and they just sit there and they breathe through it and they know that there's nothing they can do and they just sit there. For me, I have to like pace. I get up, I walk around and around and around and around and I'm like coaching myself through it and like make sure to breathe 
in through your mouth and out through your nose, like the opposite of what you want to do in real life. <laughs> and the top is faring okay. It's not getting too crazy. I just feel like it's maybe not the most flattering cutting into all my upper belly fluff. <laughs> and maybe, maybe that kind of training already exists. I don't know. Let me know. If you know, let me know. Oh no. What am I going to do? I need another one. To be honest, I feel like there's like a shot and a half. So I think that I can get away with another one. What do you think? I'm gonna mix another one. <sighs> okay. No more ice, but I don't care. You know what, actually there was more, there was like definitely, yeah, no, I say a shot and a half because this whole base was full of this last time. Okay, shot and a half, right? That's fair. Now, if I strategically pour it on the side, it shouldn't mix. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited because I like to drink a lot. Ooh. Cheers. Ding. Hot. Damn, that is so good. Dirty Sunset. I'm telling you, if I could put my name on it, I would. That's actually where the name Kitty Liquor came from, actually. I was having a conversation with family, actually, about creating my own liquor brand and just, like, how fun that would be. And then we're like, what would it be called? And then I think it was my mom that was, like, using the word liquor. Because, like, I call it booze or wine or vodka or whatever. But she was saying, like, using the word liquor. And I was like, Kitty Liquor. <laughs> and then everybody was like, yeah! <laughs> it still may happen. I don't know, but... It's just a dream. Okay, have you ever seen a piece of art that really stuck with you? Even though in my past life, I was an artist. Growing up, I was really not into art, seeing art, different art installations. Like, you know, it just wasn't, and I think a lot of us as kids aren't really super interested in art, but even into my adult life, even as an artist, I didn't know a lot about Canadian artists or it just didn't pique my interest. I like creating art, but I wasn't knowledgeable about the art scene by any means. And, you know, the odd time I'd see a piece of art that I really liked, or that would inspire me or whatever but there's this piece of art that I saw I was probably like 22 and it was at a coffee shop a little coffee shop in Tofino and I still remember it to this day and there was something about it that stuck with me like like I said to this day and basic it was probably like say what size would that be like 16 by 20 inches and um it was of and it was landscape and it was not a landscape but I just mean you know there's like portrait or landscape <laughs> it was uh wider than it was tall and basically almost looked like a galaxy in the background and it was of a guy like like a, a man laying on the ground and white and it, his spirit had lifted out of his body and was basically a replica of his silhouette but done really beautifully and like scroll and basically like his spirit was lifting out of his body and it touched me so deeply. I don't know. I don't want to say that it was, there was any, there was nothing going on in my life that made me more emotional or whatever. It was just like almost a representation of what I had believed for a long time. Right. And I'm not religious. Like I grew up Catholic, but like religion was never forced on us. And we were always free to sort of believe what we wanted. And it was lovely. But I think because the background was the universe, it was like outer space. It was grand and it just made sense. You know, the spirit was lifting and it just was kind of like all intertwined. And anyway, I, I kick myself because it was a small artist. I have no idea who it was. It was just a coffee shop. You know, some guy was like, hey, can I put my stuff up in your coffee shop? You know, and something like that. So try looking for it in Google. Like that's never going to happen. And it just struck me. Anyway, my point is, is that sometimes throughout our lives these moments happen where you see an art piece that really is like a representation of your idea of something or it's like oh yeah or like you know whatever it may be it sticks with you is do you have something like that like do you have has it ever happened to you where you've seen something that's like you'll never forget you've not forgotten till this day and you almost kick like I kick myself for not buying that piece of art but it was almost too heavy for me it was almost like I saw it I understood it I still reference it like I think about it and it's almost like changed when I think about me dying and my spirit lifting it almost has taken on that form now where I think of it in the same way this guy painted it or this 
girl painted it. So I just don't think like it's too, it's like deaf, right? But in a beautiful painting. Do I want that though? Like it's, I'm appreciative of seeing it, but would I want to buy it to see it every day? Sometimes it's like too much of a good thing is bad. I don't know what the saying is, but I think that the fact that I just saw it briefly, that was good enough for me. It did its thing. It's not this, like if you have it on your wall and you look at it every day, it loses its, you have more time to study it and more, to, oh, okay. And then you notice this and that, like, you know what I mean? Sometimes things are good in just really small doses. It's like trying to recreate something, going on a trip for a second time in the same place is never the same. So that's really different, but you know what I mean? Some things are just good a little bit and then that's... It's more powerful that way, right? Which language do you find to be the sexiest? So there are two different categories for me. One is an actual language and one is an accent because I have an answer for both. For me, spoken language is definitely... Let me think about this one hard. <laughs> I know I acted like I had it already in my head, but I have a few different ones. So I do have to, and this is going to be like an obvious answer, but spoken, I have to say, is probably French. France French. Okay. I grew up in Canada. We're a bilingual country, not Quebec French. And that's ruined by <laughs> French teachers in the French immersion school that I was in from grade, from kindergarten to grade six. So, oui, je peux parler un petit peu de français. That's all I know. <laughs> no, I know more, but I mean, it's like, you don't practice it, you lose it. But I think that my teachers were so mean. Oh, when I say mean, I don't mean strict. I didn't get the strap. You know, I wasn't born in 1945. My teachers were just really, I had a really hard time learning, right? And I mean, a million people are like, I'm a visual learner. Uh, I truly am. Like it, reading black letters on white paper just didn't do it for me. So I had a really hard time. So, but my teachers, my French teachers especially, really mean to me. And I'll get into that in another podcast. Um, but it's okay. I'm, I'm okay now. And, you know, maybe a stronger person and blah, blah, blah. But uh, France French, a man speaking French in like a gentle form. It's not aggressive. It's very like, there's a lot of like, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to say, explain it. But that's probably if I were to choose one that I would listen to in the bedroom would be France French. Now, accent. Now, this is going to sound funny, but South African is the one for me. A South African accent is so lovely and I just love it. More than British, more than, because I like British too, depending on where in Britain you're coming from. I don't want to use like the word sexy and my opa in the same sentence, <laughs> but my oma and opa are from Holland and I do find a Dutch accent, like an accent sexy too. I don't know. It's just like a thing. I think it's because like I associate that with like masculinity and like, but uh, so yeah, but I think South African would be, would be my other choice. I like it. In fact, I had a doctor, a gay doctor. He was from South Africa, very attractive, but gay <laughs> and a lot older than me at the time. And that was my first, the first time I'd ever heard a South African accent because I was like, South Africa, like they, they have almost like a British accent, but it's not, it's like different, but it's just the way they pronounce it. Anyway, I love it. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so yeah, if you're curious, now you know. I just want to savor this. It's so good. It's weird because like the flavors of orange and apple together are not really something that I would have put together. And not to say that orange is the real ingredient in Gatorade anyway, but love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, now it's time for Kitty Twisters. <laughs> All right, so Kitty Twisters is a segment where I like to read some jokes that made me laugh out loud. I don't have many today because um, I started this podcast super late today. <laughs> it's almost 4 p.m. here <laughs> and normally I'm done by like two, but I had some things to come up and blah, blah, blah. So I didn't have a lot of time to find them, but the ones that I did find I'm, I'm enjoying. I enjoyed and I think you will too. And they're all sick, by the way. They're sick sex jokes, whatever they are. Just FYI, in case you're offended, trigger warning. We're going to get dirty up in here. A family walks into a hotel and the father goes to the front desk and says, I hope the porn is disabled. And the guy at the front desk replies, it's just regular porn, you sick f <laughs> Pardon my language, but it's part of the joke. And um, that made me laugh. That was fun. I... 
am emotionally constipated. I haven't given a shit in days. <laughs> it's so funny because I'm like, I haven't worn makeup in like six days. Hmm, I can relate. If a woman sleeps with 10 men, she's a slut. But if a man does it, he's gay. He's definitely gay. If a guy remembers the color of your eyes after the first date, chances are you have small boobs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is this made me laugh out loud. Would masturbating while smoking weed be considered master blazing, weed whacking, or hijacking? <laughs> Which one do I like the best? I think, I don't know, weed whacking's good. Hijacking's good too. Isn't it scary that doctors call what they do practice? <laughs> True. Okay, this is the last one I got, you guys. Get ready to laugh. I bought a box of condoms earlier today. The cashier asked if I'd like a bag. I said, nah, I'll just turn the lights off. <laughs> uh, it would have been funny if he was there with his girlfriend and she was really... I'm not a mean person. Don't get me wrong. All right, that concludes Kitty Twisters. Another fun thing I could do with a ponytail is this. The helicopter. See, girls can do the helicopter too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sick. Okay. I have a new kitten, a little orange tabby, little boy. In fact, most orange tabbies are boy cats. They're male. It's just a dominant thing. It is possible for females to be tabby as well. Like, sorry, orange as well. He is about eight weeks old and I've named him Cheeto. And he is the sweetest little boy ever. He disappeared two days ago. <laughs> Don't worry, he's since returned. But he was only probably like 500 yards away from my front porch area where he, he was under the deck and he's got like his food and water. He knows where like that's a safe place for him. And he disappeared. And I was like, what the hell? And he was gone for so long. And I thought, oh, shit, like a raven came and swooped him up. We've got eagles. We've got wildcats here. We got freaking bears. You name it. So it was very possible because the thing is, he's orange. He's not like gray or brown that can like blend in with the land. He's orange. So he's like a little dinner bell or dinner flag <laughs> so i thought oh shit like poor cheeto he's become a little snack you know for some wild animal well what do you know up comes cheeto two days later from down below like 500 yards that way it was just a miracle he's back and he's better than ever and so cute and so sweet and he's just like a little you know He's just a little lay in your hand. But the thing is he meows like hell at night. So I actually keep him in my garage. <laughs> no, actually, so because I've only had him for, now I've had him for about a week. I put him in his kennel at night. He's got food and water. Just, you're supposed to kind of keep them in one spot for a certain amount of time. And if I left him out at night, he'd wander. Of course, because he already has. And yeah, he just spends the night in there, but he's got space, food and water and little kitty litter. So he's... He's good, but I'm just so stoked that I have him and he's my little man. Okay, I'm gonna close this off with a question that I had about Hollywood and the pursuit of acting and like why I've never gone and tried to become an actress or whatever. My brain will never memorize lines. <laughs> so, okay, as a kid, I always wanted to be a performer. I don't mean this in the sense that like, I was a stage child, I wanted to dance and whatever. I just had this fantasy of being in the movies, being on stage, singing, dancing, performing. My parents were performers and I just had it in my head that that was what I was gonna do. I think every kid has this fantasy. Like if any kid ever watched a superhero movie, you know, they'd wanna be in one of those movies. Ask any kid. So it's not like an abnormal thing, but I just, yeah, I definitely had this, this fantasy. When I was younger too, my mom put my, my sister and I in um, acting classes. It was like modeling acting school or something and where you'd go in and learn how to walk on a runway and you'd learn how to pose for pictures and stuff like that. It was interesting, but I just remember, I remember it vaguely, like I must've been 10 or something. And I actually went and went and applied. No, I went and auditioned for mode models believe or it was anyway I was about 14 and I went in to be seen by these scouts or these agents to see if I would become part of their modeling agency like become one of their models it's funny because like I talk about this all the time I'm I'm 5'8 so I'm not short but I'm not like 5'10 like some of the models are but I have like a long torso and shorter legs so my proportions are a bit off and also I had acne they were like ah eh, clear up your skin and come back <laughs> And so I was crushed. Long story short, I didn't get a call back. <laughs> and you know what? Like I grew up in Alberta. It's not like I lived in California and there was movies happening and I could audition and whatever. Even though I don't confidently think 
that I can memorize lines. I think that there are techniques you can learn to do that. You know, there are times when my brain is like on, I can remember people's names. I can reference this. I can, you know, do you ever have those days where you're just like on point and you're like, oh, what did I do today that made me like so smart? <laughs> then other days you're just like, oh, you can't think of names. And you're just like, ugh. So I think that clearly there's some sort of technique for learning lines and you get better at it as you do more of it, I guess. And I think my sister would be incredible at it because she speaks, I don't know how many languages now. And she just has like this storage where she can like think about the memory you need to learn a language, but then it's also technique. You know, it's like you learn a certain way. So it's not out of the question. I get a lot of people telling me you look like Christina Applegate. That's like the number one that I get. I also have had um see it's happening right now <laughs> what's her name she played mary jane and spider-man anyway but mainly christine applegate they're like if they ever make a remake or if they ever do whatever movie where they need a younger version of her um then i'd be perfect I'm like but it makes me nervous because i'm like Ugh, i just the the pressure i think that's part of it too is that i would not want to inconvenience people around me i hate doing that that's why i hate doing certain sports with people when i'm really not good at it because i don't want to hold people back and i'm like i couldn't imagine a room full of people where they're spending thousands of dollars a day and i'm just sitting there going take 12. okay cat it's go to the store and i'm like okay okay i got it i got it go to the mall <laughs> I would just be terrible. And can I act? I don't know. I haven't really ever seriously tried. I'm always making fun of myself. Like when I'm singing, I'm like, I'm always doing a goofier version of like what I can actually do just because it's like, it feels weird for me to be like, I can sing. And then, so I think I'd have to get over that, which would enable me to memorize my lines or just be able to concentrate more. That's that. So if anybody has any parts out there that they want me to audition for, I will send in a video audition. <sighs> I won't have had a concoctail um, beforehand. Holy God, that's good. I swear to God, this is it. This is the summer cocktail you need. All right, everybody, that concludes episode 16 of Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I am Cat Wonders. I know you, I said that already, but just in case you didn't know. Uh, for those of you listening to this podcast, I have a video version on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel. That'll be linked down below. Actually, <laughs> that's stupid because if there's a link below, it's because you're watching this on YouTube. But go to YouTube, search Cat Wonders. You'll see my podcast where you can see me make all my amazing things and my references and everything else. And my outfit and my nails. <laughs> also... I have an OnlyFans for $5 a month and a Patreon that starts at $5 a month. So check those out. Also have a TikTok. I got a Twitter. I got a Facebook. I got a Snapchat. Those will all be linked down below on my YouTube channel. So if you want those links, go over there. And if you are watching this podcast, you can also download and listen to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Google, you name it. It's pretty much everywhere, so you're never going to be left hanging. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss future podcasts or bikini try-ons. I got the works going on, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in my next video, my next podcast on Patreon OnlyFans, but hopefully it's soon, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye!